Hey guys, Fabio here once again, continuing once again with uh, my Brandon Lee stuff. And now I'm going to review uh, Brandon's, you know, rise to superstardom. You know, uh, like I said at the end of the Rapid Fire review, definitely one of my top 10 favorite films of all time. You know, one of my favorite movies. I just can't get enough of it. You know, I just love this movie so much. It's a great comic book film, not a superhero film. It's a comic book film. There's a difference. And I'll talk about that. Um, but it's just a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, please stop what you're doing. Stop this review and just go buy it because it's just such a great movie. I, I, I know you'll love it. There's no doubt about it. You know, it's just such, you know, a wonderful film. Extremely underrated. I hope it doesn't get remade. I'm hearing about a remake. Sorry, I adjusted the camera real quick. Um, you know, so enough of me yapping about what, how awesome it is and start reviewing. Of course, I am reviewing... And I am talking about how great The Crow is. And this is the Two Disc Collector's Edition DVD. Just a great DVD. It's got a lot of awesome special features. A great audio commentary. Um, you know, you will love this DVD if you don't have it already. And this, The Crow is the story of Eric Draven, who is a young rock guitarist, who, along with his fiance, are murdered on Devil's Night, which is the night before Halloween, which is celebrated in Motor City, um, where... Just the whole city gets lit on fire, and, and the cops can't do nothing about it. Um, so now, one year after his death, Eric comes back from the dead to avenge the, to avenge his and his fiance's death, and that's the plot in a nutshell. I don't really have to say any more. That's basically it. And like I said, this is just such a great movie. Um, you know, it's a, it's sad. It really is. When I watch this movie, it it kind of gets me down a little bit because of what happened to Brandon Lee. And for those of you that don't know what happened, um, basically they were filming, they were actually filming his death sequence. And what happened was uh, somehow a real shell casing got in the prop gun, which is usually filled with blanks. What happened was um, no one knew what was going on, you know, no one knew that the gun was loaded. And Brandon, in the sequence, originally was supposed to enter the door with a bag of groceries. And they had the squib hidden in the bag of groceries and they were going to explode it when he would walk in and the gun would go off. So he walked in and the Michael Massey, who plays Fun Boy in the movie, I'll talk about him, um, fired his prop gun. Uh, they exploded the, the, uh, the squib. Brandon fell back. He hit his mark and stuff like that. He laid there. They yelled cut. Uh, Brandon was known to be a jokester, you know, he did play a lot of practical jokes on people, so they thought he was just screwing around and stuff like that, you know, they yelled cut and they said, are you alright, you know, we cut, you can get up and stuff, and after a minute or so, they knew something was wrong, so they went over to check and they saw that there was a hole in his shirt and they lifted his shirt up and they saw that the bullet had gone in, so they called 911, they rushed Brandon to the hospital, what happened was the bullet went in through his stomach I know you can't see it, and it got stuck in the in his spine. So they tried for like 14 hours or something like that to get the bullet out, and they couldn't. And basically, what happened was Brandon Lee bled to death, and that's what happened. You know, um, no one really ever knows what happened. Uh, no one knows how that you know bullet got in the gun. Um, you know, there's different stories and rumors and stuff like that i'm not going to reveal my opinion because it's my opinion and i know people are going to criticize and stuff so i'll leave that to myself um so basically the production was shut shut down and you know they weren't sure what was going to happen but um you know everyone everybody i mean everybody the cast the crew everybody the distribute the production company they said we got to do this for brandon we got to finish this Luckily, they didn't have much to finish. They, there's only about um, maybe 10, 15 minutes worth of footage in the film that's not Brandon. So that's not bad because the movie's 101 minutes. So it's an hour and 41 minutes. So basically, you know, there's like 8 or 10 is 91, 5, 90, 89, 88, 87, 86, 85, or. There's like 87 minutes worth of footage that's Brandon Lee, and the rest, you know, the other 20 minutes isn't. So that's not bad, you know, that's that's good. Um, and you can tell what, what scenes aren't him because they don't show his face. It's like 
side side shots and back shots. But there is sequences where they do show his face, and it's not him. They just took CGI and they put his face on the body double and stuff like that. So you know, and I, and to be honest with you, when I had heard about that, I was just devastated. And I know I said this earlier in one of my Bruce Lee movie reviews, but it really kind of bothers me. Um, my all my friends are like, why? It's like you didn't even know him. You know that happened when you were you were two when it happened. You know how do you, I mean? Do you even remember it happening? It's like doesn't matter. It's like Brandon was just about to hit it big time. He was about to step out of his father's shadow because before this, people had known him as Bruce Lee's son. If he had lived and this movie had come out, people would say, oh, that's Brandon Lee. He was in The Crow. Oh, he was also in this movie and this movie. Oh, and he's Bruce Lee's son, but look at all these great movies that he was in. You know, that's what would have happened. And, you know, he would have become a huge action star, and I'll talk about that in the next video. But it does bother me. It's like someone so young and so incredibly talented and was going to be so successful was just cut down in their prime, before their prime. I know stuff like it happens all the time, too, but... It's just different. I just feel differently about this. But anyway, that's just my opinion. Um, but, you know, he's just so great in this movie. And they have, like, his last on-camera interview on here on the DVD. But it's different. Because I also have it on VHS. And both the interviews are different. So I have both. I didn't know that. When I got the V, I just bought the VHS because I found it on VHS and I wanted it. But when I watched it, I'm like, wait a minute. This interview is different. So I hold on to both, you know. Um... But, you know, on the commentary track, they were talking about how he was just so incredibly nice. He, you know, he was just really excited to be working on this movie. He just worked so hard. You know, he learned guitar because his character is a musician, you know, and he worked extremely closely once again with Jeff Amata to ensure that the fight scenes were, had no martial arts in it, you know, and he, he said, they said that, you know, he's just was so into it and they were just, and they were devastated, you know, more than I was. They said, he was just so, you know, amped up for this movie, and that's great. And James O'Barr, the comic book creator, when he had heard that Brandon Lee was going to be in it, he was disappointed. He's like, you know, this is just going to be a kung fu movie. It's going to go straight to video. But he met Brandon at it like a, they did it like a table reading or something, and he was just so impressed and so mesmerized with his style and stuff like that. It's just great. And, you know, the character is, you know, the crow, you know, this this spirit, this ghost, so to speak, you know, he's not really alive, um, you know, and he's just, like, the thing I love about it is, he's so poetic, you know, he's just like, you know, I'm immortal, and you wronged me, and now you're gonna die, and justice will be served, you know, he's so poetic about it, sorry, I moved out of frame, um, and that's just great, you know, the lines that Brandon delivers, you know, there's just, um, I'm trying to think of the lines now, like, uh, he's messing with Tintin, the guy with the knives, the first, like, what he does is he kills them in order how they attack his girlfriend, so that's really, or his fiance, I'm sorry, so that's cool, like, the guy Tintin, he's like this knife guy, and he's throwing these knives at him, he's like, try harder, try again, you know, he, he enjoys the fact that he's back from the dead, and he is immortal, and he's gonna kill these guys, you know, he loves it. You know, he just relishes the fact that, you know, he is the crow. You know what I mean? Um, and then he catches the knife. I love how he catches the knife because he just, the guy throws a knife at him. He catches it like this. And then he just picks it up and he throws it back. And then he's like, victims, aren't we all? Then he moves on to Fun Boy. And, like, the bird, because the crow is guided by an actual crow, which is his link to the living realm and the realm of the dead. And if something happens to the crow, something happens to the man, which you come to find out. So the crow flies in, and Fun Boy's like, oh, it's just a squat because he's high and stuff like that. And he's like, here, birdie, birdie. And then the crow walks in, and he's like, here, Fun Boy. He's like, don't do that, man. You almost gave me a heart attack. And, like, you know, he's, like, saying all this stuff to him, and, you know, he's cussing at him and stuff like that. And then he pulls a gun on him, and Brandon just puts his hand up to the gun like the barrel's like this and he's just like come on fuck boy you got me dead bang and he shoots him in the hand and like i said he's immortal so he can't be hurt and stuff like that so he's just like oh oh and then he shows him his hand and the wound seals up and he's laughing and howling and stuff like that because he's having fun you know and and that's you know it's i know the movie's dark you know the movie's really dark it's probably the darkest comic book film ever 
I mean, The Dark Knight doesn't compare to this movie. I mean, it gets pretty intense in this movie. And he's just like, stop me if you heard this one. Jesus Christ walks into a bar. Or, yeah, walks into a hotel. He hands the innkeeper three nails and says, can you put me up for the night? You know, it's a bad joke. Like, not bad. Like, it's a good joke, but it's a bad joke. It's like, wow, did he just say that? But it's just great because, you know, he's just, you know, um, you know, he's just having fun, you know, like I keep saying. And then, I actually, I forgot about it. I'm sorry, I skipped over the sequence where he's in the pawn shop. And, um, you know, he's messing with John Pilato, who was in Dawn of the Dead and uh, Bushwhacked with Daniel Stern. A fine actor, very fine actor. Um, he's like, what are you supposed to be, Dusthead? Halloween isn't told him more. I'm sorry, he's like, we're closed and stuff like that. And, you know, he taps on the door and he's like, hey, Dusthead. And he's like, hey, and busts his head open. Or he takes his head and he busts, it, busts the glass, sorry. And, um... He's like, and suddenly I heard a rapping, as if someone were tapping. Or no, as suddenly I heard a tapping, as if someone were rapping. Gently rapping at my chamber door, and he wipes the glass off. Did you hear me rapping? He's like, you know me, owe me a new door, and he shoots him, and the wound seals up, and he's just laughing, because he enjoys it. Um, and then earlier on, I forgot about that, he's chasing after Tintin, he's like running on these roofs, and he jumps down into this pile of trash, and he just laughs. Just does this deep laugh, you know, this hysterical, maniacal laugh, but he's enjoying it. Like the Joker, you know, you could see the comparisons and you know, stuff like that. Um, but back to the pawn shop scene. I'm sorry I skipped over it. Um, you know, he's asking about the characters and stuff like that. He's like, you know, your, your associate Tintin pawned a ring here a year ago. He confided me before he ran out of breath. And then, um, you know, uh, He's, you know, breaking the glass. He's like, he's like, uh, I got, I can't think of it right now, man. Um, he's talking about like the, or Pilato's like, you know, fun boy. They all hang out at the pit. They're all T-Birds friends. He's like, Jolly Pirates Club with Jolly Pirate nicknames. And like, he's throwing these wedding rings at him. Each one of these is a life, a life you helped destroy. Tell him Eric Draven sends his regards. That death is coming for them tonight. And he pours gasoline in the place. He's like, you're nothing but street grease, you motherfucker. They're going to erase your sorry ass. And he's like, is that gasoline I smell? And he's like, no, man. And he blows the pawn shop up. It's great. Then we have this really cool scene on the street with Ernie Hudson, who plays the cop. And I'll talk about him in a minute. Ernie Hudson, you know him. Ghostbusters, The Substitute. Uh, great actor. Definitely a great actor. This is my favorite movie of his. It's his best role, in my opinion. I love it, you know. Um, you know, he's like, you know, T-Bird? He had a friend who liked to play with knives, like the coat. And he's like, move, Snow White, and you're dead. And he's like, and I say I'm dead, and I move. You know, it's just great. You know, it's just like, once again, the, the poetic lines that Brandon Lee does are just so awesome. I love it. That's the my favorite thing about the character and him, just the lines. Just the stuff he says is great. Um... You know, just uh, some of the other lines in the movie. Um, trying to think. Oh, he... The little girl... Well... Uh, <laughs> I kind of didn't really prepare for this. Um, a friend... Of, they have a friend in the movie. Him and his fiance, This little girl, Sarah. And um, her mother is, is like girlfriend with Fun Boy. And in the sequence with Fun Boy, they're getting high on morphine. And he squeezes the morphine out of her. And he says, Mother is the name for God on the lips and hearts of all children. Your daughter is on the streets waiting for her. Waiting for you. Go to her. You know, he kind of uh, straightens her out. And she's played by Anna Thompson, who was in Bad Boys. She had a small role in True Romance. I like her. She's a good actress. I like her stuff. Oh, she was also in Unforgiven with Clint Eastwood. Forgot about that. But anyway, um, you know, I'm trying to just think of some of the lines here. Um, oh, it's in the boardroom sequence, which I'll talk about in a minute. I see you've made your decision. Let's see you force it. Just come on. Yeah, only Brandon Lee can say shit like that. And you know what I mean? Stallone, Chuck Norris, Arnold, nobody but Brandon Lee can say shit so cool like that. You know what I mean? It's just great. But, um, you know, in terms of... The, I, I kind of skipped around a little bit. In terms of the other actors, like I said, Ernie Hudson plays the cop. Albrecht, just 
great role, you know, tough, you know, street cop. You know, he's just fantastic. Michael Wincott plays Top Dollar, the main villain. Just another great underrated actor. He was in Metro with Eddie Murphy. Uh, he was in The Three Musketeers with uh, Charlie Sheen. So he's by winning. And Keeper Sutherland and Chris O'Donnell. I love that movie. I really do. Um, some of the other great actors in it. Uh, David Patrick Kelly plays T-Bird. You know him from Commando and The Warriors and 48 Hours. Another fine actor. Tony Todd, the Candyman, uh, plays Grunge, one of Top Dollar's henchmen. Fine actor. Definitely a great actor. Tony Todd, the man. And Bai Ling, who is, she's been in some stuff here and there. Uh, she plays uh, Micah, who is uh, Top Dollar's sister. And she's a really cool character, kind of like soft-spoken and kind of a little eerie, a little creepy, but that's cool. Uh, Rochelle Davis, like I said, she plays the little girl Sarah, who actually she and Brandon Lee became very close friends um, during the filming. And when Brandon had passed, you know, she was very upset, very devastated by it. And she actually retired from acting because of it. You know, kind of a sad story. But anyway, just, you know, the movie is just chock full of great actors. A lot of great underrated character actors. Um, you know, just great. They're perfect in these roles. And like I said, they all wanted to come back to finish the movie. You know, that's that's fantastic. That that says a lot. And Alex Proyas, who directed Dark City, this was like his first big movie. So you could definitely see the comparisons in both films and stuff like that. Because Dark City was a good movie. I really enjoyed that flick. Very different very very good science fiction film. I'm going to have to get that on DVD eventually. But, um, you know, in terms of the action sequences, like I said, uh, Brandon worked really hard to ensure that there was no martial arts in the film. It's all street fighting. Uh, you know, he fights Tintin, or, T yeah, Tintin, I'm sorry, and there's just, like, he's, they're fighting with pipes and stuff like that, and it's just a really down and dirty, gritty kind of street fighting style. It was great. Um... Some, there's a really cool car chase sequence in it. I don't think Brandon Lee is in that scene because you don't see his face. Um, then we have this boardroom shootout where, like I said, he gets up on the table and he's like, I just want him. He's talking about one of the other... Uh, he's talking about Skank, who's played by Ansel David. A really cool actor. Another, you know, one of the henchmen. And Top Dollar's like, you can't have him. And he's like, well, like, once again, it's probably my favorite line in the movie. He's like, I see you've made your decision." Let's see you enforce it. And they shoot him, and he falls off the table, and they're like, where'd he go? And then he pulls, he starts pulling guys under the table and shooting them, and then he comes up and he starts shooting people, and then he's cutting people up with swords, and he's like, you're all going to die. You know, it's just great. Like I said, once again, no one can deliver lines like that like Brandon Lee. You know, Schwarzenegger, nobody. Just be so calm and cool and collective and be poetic about it, you know, and having fun with it, you know what I mean? And that's, that's great. Um... The finale is really cool. The finale is kind of, um, it's like a metaphoric thing because it's in a church. It's like in this old rundown church and they're, they're having this shootout. Then they fight on top of the church. It's just a great sequence. And like I said, I, I guess that what they were going for was like a metaphor kind of thing, you know, to, to explain like, this is the end of the road, you know, like he's, this, he's going to get his revenge and, you know, he's going to, you know, you know, go away, not die, but, you know, go back to where, you know, to heaven, you know, so to speak, or something like that, but, uh, you know, just, it's just, it's just, uh, can't talk, it's just such a great movie, and such an underrated, and just people need to see this movie more, and just see what Brandon Lee was going to accomplish, you know what I mean, it's just, it's, it's very sad to see that, you know, what happened, happened. But anyway, another thing I love about this movie, the soundtrack. And I do have the soundtrack on my iPod. Just great music. You have uh, Burn by The Cure, which they play when he's putting the makeup on. A great sequence, although it's not Brandon Lee. And it just makes perfect sense that they use the song. It's just a great song. Another tune, uh, Golfa Tentum Blues by a band called Machines of Loving Grace. It's like this grungy type of thing. Well, the whole soundtrack is alternative and metal and just dark music. Like music you wouldn't hear on the radio, which is great because the movie's dark and stuff like that. So Then Stone Temple Pilots did the song Big Empty, which became a huge hit for them. It's a great song. You know, they use it a couple times in the movie. Um, Nine Inch Nails does a tune called Dead Souls, which I think is a cover. It's a really great scene. They use it early on in the movie when he's running on the... Uh, sorry, I'm just moving my neck. Um... He's running on the rooftops, and then uh, 
tune called Darkness by Rage Against the Machine. I'm not sure if it's in the actual movie, but it's just a good song. It's an early Rage Against the Machine song. Um, another great song is uh, After the Flesh, which is by a band called My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult. They play it before the big shootout in the boardroom. It's like this techno like metal song. It's cool. I like it. You know, it's got a cool beat. It's like and they play it during the shootout, so it kind of makes sense. Um, another song called uh, Time Baby 3, which is actually uh, like a cover of the, the band song Medicine. They perform it live in the movie. Cool song. I, I actually heard this song before I saw the movie. Uh, my dad got like this promo CD of alternative music long time ago, and it was on there. And I, it's like a really mellow, like really cool tune, and I really like it. And then the song in the end credits is called It Can't Rain All the Time by Jane Saberi. And it, it upsets me when I hear it. Like, I really, like, when I, when I hear that song, I want to cry because it's just so sad. Because it's like this, it's like a ballad, but it's very soft. It's, it's like the softest song on the, on the soundtrack and stuff. But it just reminds me about Brandon Lee and, like, what happened and stuff like that. So, you know, it is a little upsetting to me. But anyway... But uh, I know this was kind of a little mushy, you know, kind of a little mismatched review, but I, I apologize for that, but I hope you guys liked it anyway. Um, so, well, like, my favorite, this is definitely my favorite scene in the movie. He's wrapping up T-Bird, and T-Bird's got, like, this custom car and stuff. So he wraps him up in the car, and unfortunately, Brandon Lee wasn't in this scene. And, you know, he drives the car off a pier, and the car blows up. And he puts lighter fluid on the ground and he lights a match and it burns, er, it's like a fire crow. And that's awesome. That's just a great moment in the film. Um, you know, my favorite moment in the film. Like I said, unfortunately, Brandon was not in that scene. That was after he, they shot that after he passed away. Um, but anyway, so once again, uh, you know, The Crow is definitely one of my, in my top 10 favorite films, probably my top five, um, to be honest with you. Um, just a great underrated comic book film. It's not a superhero movie. Superheroes is like Batman, X-Men, Spider-Man. This is a comic book movie. Like Time Cop. Time Cop's a comic book movie. He's not a superhero. But just a fantastic, underrated, just everything about it is great. I have no problems with the movie whatsoever. Um, I'm actually, I'm trying to get a work, the work print version because it's about 20 minutes longer and actually has some of the scenes that they shot with Brandon Lee, which they ended up deleting in the movie. Some of them were reshot and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get that, you know, to see that different version and stuff like that. So if you haven't seen it, seriously, what the hell are you waiting for? Go buy it, please, because you will love it, you know, just to see what Brandon Lee was about to accomplish. You know, he was, with this movie, like I said, he was about to step out of his father's shadow and let people know that he was his own person. So, thanks for watching, and take care. Peace.